how hard is it going to be to lift off this head? Let's see if it's stuck. Whoop. Boy, it wasn't stuck at all. There it is. Finally on the ground and off the truck. And looking now at the engine block, we clearly have some evidence that we've got some green coolant pooling there on top of that piston. That is the number four cylinder and piston that we knew we had a leak from the original leak down test. We'll need to peel off this head gasket and take a look under it and see if we can see some evidence of where that coolant is coming into the cylinder. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I was hoping to find some kind of evidence where we had a failure on this gasket between the cooling passages and the combustion chamber. But other than a bunch of gook built up here on the bottom, I don't really see anything that I recognize with my, my inexperienced eye. I'm going to need to turn the head upside down to... Uh, check for flatness and clean that surface and so that the hydraulic lifters don't fall out I'm going to go ahead and just remove them with a magnet and it's very important to keep them in their same orientation so I'm just going to put them in this box and remember exactly where they came from they just lift right out there's not much clearance there of course they're covered with oil Otherwise, give them a little bit of jiggle, and they come straight out. Look at them a little more closely. They're just a, it's just a cup. Also, mark the box. I know which direction is the front of the engine. All right, I flipped it over and put it up on blocks. I really don't see anything crazy around the, uh, the surface here. Valves are a little more discolored than the others, but that's probably just because they've been wet. I was hoping to see some clear signs as to where it was sneaking by, or maybe even some some bad corrosion. Here's the intake gasket. I'll be replacing that because these little seals have gone back to, here's one down here. <laughs> Completely came off. So I've got the head here up on a table so I can uh, work on it at a good height. And I want to check it for flatness to make sure that it is, uh, doesn't need to be machined or worse yet replaced. Before we can measure for flatness, we have to clean the carbon off and make sure we've got a nice clean surface here. Since this head is made of aluminum, I really don't want to use anything like a razor blade or, or a utility knife blade, something that might accidentally gouge the soft aluminum. So I, I'm going to use you know, a series of either plastic putty knives, or I've got this nice set of uh, gasket scrapers. You just use these to work the surface down. Just try and scrape off as much, of, as much of that carbon and debris, old oil residue. I'm getting some debris down into the cooling passages and into the bolt holes, but we're gonna clean those out later. Acetone is good to use to you know, clean off the grease and oil residue and make sure you use a precision applicator. Now we want to check the cylinder heads for flatness and the service manual says that uh, we're looking for a maximum warpage of 0.1 millimeters or 0 0.0039 inches. So to check for warpage or flatness, I bought myself a nice precision uh, Sterrett brand uh, straight edge. These are not inexpensive and it's not a ruler but it's a, a precisionly milled straight edge and it's uh, pretty thick. And what we're going to use it for is to see how 
flat this head is. I'm also going to use a feeler gauge and the idea here is to go at different uh, different angles. We'll start corner to corner. I'm going to run it right over top of the bolt hole heads and see if this feeler gauge will fit under the straight edge. And we're fine there. Let's go corner to corner this dimension. Just looking to see if it's going to slip under or not. And it seems like we're pretty flat. Then we'll go bolt, bolt hole to bolt hole this direction. We'll come over here, do the same. Right across the middle, oftentimes when the engine overheats, a lot of times either the weak points right between the cylinders, but that's where you'll get a low spot. But we're okay here. This one hasn't overheated in my ownership. Now we'll go across and go this dimension. I'm just going to keep on doing this and see how it looks. On a bad overheat, you could get some pretty wild warpage and this will just slip right under. Now if you remember, my number four cylinder, which is this one, was the one that had the coolant leak. So I've been looking more closely at this particular one to see if I could potentially find the source of that leak. I really couldn't tell very well by looking at the head gasket. While inspecting this portion of the head, where the combustion chamber meets up to this coolant passage. There's one area here that's a little bit suspect and using my fingernail I can feel a little bit of an indentation just, just from about here to here which you know could potentially explain why some coolant would be passing through that spot. Using the light test they can see a little bit of something there too. So we're looking at cylinder number four here at a very oblique angle and with the flashlight now behind it you can see a little bit of light creeping through. I mean, it, yes, light's coming through, but it's a minuscule little spot. Disregard this over here. That's where a bolt hole is. But right here and right there is where the straight edge is intersecting the firing ring in that slight indentation that I can feel with my finger. I think I'm going to consult with my uh, local machine shop and see about uh, potentially resurfacing that head, see what they think. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove this, the housing cap and the ground strap. While I'm here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and remove these semicircular plugs. They're held in with uh, just some sealant. There's one on uh, on each end. I'm going to turn my attention back now to the engine block and see if I can clean off the surface here. Some debris still left over from the last head gasket. I'm going to try my best to uh, not push any of that debris down into the cooling passages here. Uh, I'm not so worried about the combustion chamber because I can use a shop vac and suck that back out of there, which I will do. Now this surface is cast iron and we're not so worried about gouging it like we would aluminum like the aluminum head so I can use a blade like this and maybe do a more effective job. I'll get a little acetone on a rag. This is nice and smooth now. I can feel it with my finger. I don't feel any imperfections. So now let's measure it for flatness. 
really don't anticipate any problems here, but it's always good practice to check. So I'm happy with that. I think the engine block is going to be perfectly flat. Not present any problems. I did retract this piston down just a little bit to make sure that it was uh, not standing proud of the surface. While I'm in here cleaning up the uh, top end of the engine, I think I'll go ahead and remove the other intake manifold gasket. And again, try and keep as much debris out of the intake on this side since I'm not going to be taking this head off. This is the right hand or passenger side head. It's made of aluminum. Back to my plastic gasket scraper on this side. So I want to show you the gasket uh, kit that I bought. Pretty comprehensive uh, kit. Let's start over here. These are uh, uh, exhaust gaskets. They're going to go between the crossover pipe and the uh, exhaust manifold. I will need all of them because I didn't take all of that apart. These are the housing plugs. We just took one of those off of the engine. These are the semicircular plugs, and these are made out of rubber. I think I'm going to continue to use the aluminum ones that came on the engine. These are valve seals. I don't know what these are. Various washers, some copper, some uh, looks like aluminum. These are valve cover washers. Kind of a cup washer with a rubber insert. Various uh, O-rings and seals. I don't know what all these are for. These are the gaskets that go on the spark plug tubes or over the spark plug tubes and they get uh, inserted into the valve cover. Mine weren't leaking and they're kind of a lot of trouble to change. I don't know if I'll do those or not. Came with six of those. These are the cam oil seals. One for each cam. Goes right behind the cam sprocket. Exhaust manifold gaskets left and right. These go on the intake uh, plenum, upper and lower. Two new valve cover gaskets. Various um, uh, coolant line gaskets. These are the intake manifold gaskets that go on top of the heads. And last but not least, what we were actually here to, to take care of are our two cylinder head gaskets. They are slightly different. They look identical, but in actuality, there is one difference that I've discerned. Well, there's a couple of differences, and it has to do with the coolant passages. This one on this one is a through passage, and on this one, it is not. And another difference I saw was uh, right here. Two holes here, one hole there. And again, one hole here, no hole here. Anyway, this is the one for the driver's side, the left-hand side of the engine, because it has a hole right there. And that is our gasket set. Well, here's my cylinder head, fresh back from the machine shop. Before I took it over there, I disassembled it. Here are all the valves that I took out of the head. Four valves per cylinder, right? There's two exhaust valves, two intake valves, and for each valve, there's the, uh, the spring the spring retainer, the spring seat that sits down in the head, and then all the, the valve keepers I got all right here, two per valve. Those are all the valve stem oil seals. The machine shop cleaned it up real nice. So I took it to him to have it resurfaced to make sure this was completely flat and to get rid of that indentation there, that, uh, that gasket indentation. And once he cleaned it, he showed me this. We got a nice little crack right there between this exhaust valve and this intake valve. You can see where the crack even goes down and behind the valve seat. A bit of the crack is even visible down here inside of the where the valve goes and on the back side underneath the valve seat on the exhaust side. So long story short, this is junk, just a piece of a uh, chunk of aluminum. So time to get a replacement cylinder head.
not what I wanted to uh, hear, but uh, it's good to know that we finally have a, an official diagnosis. It probably was not leaky head gasket that was uh, causing my coolant loss, but somehow related to this crack. In any event, we can't go forward with that cracked head. We need a replacement. So I got on the internet, did some research. I found a source on eBay, believe it or not. And for 325 bucks, I've got a remanufactured head coming from Texas. Should be here next week. And we'll resume this when that arrives. Here it is. The new one arrived yesterday. Came shipped from Texas. Came packed in this box along with some foam padding for me to return my, my old one, my core, with a prepaid uh, label. So let's take a look and see what we got. I got it all nicely cleaned up. The uh, cylinder head gasket surface is really nicely machined and flat. It's like they painted the body with a kind of a gray paint, I guess, to make it look nice. But I think a problem with that is it's on the surfaces where the, like in here, where the intake gasket's going to go. In fact, <laughs> it's like I can even scrape that paint off with my fingernail. I think I'll clean that paint off before I uh, do anything else. Let's take a look at the exhaust side. Same thing in, on the exhaust side. Surface is nice and flat, so I'll just clean the paint off to make sure we get a good seal there. In this case, on the exhaust manifold gasket. So with some lacquer thinner, I clean the paint off of the, uh, in this case, the, uh, the intake manifold uh, surface. So that's all ready to go for the gasket. Now, got to transfer a couple things. The new head did not come with uh, with studs here on the intake side. So we'll be transferring those from the old head. So we got to remove those studs. So one way I do that is I thread a couple of nuts onto the stud. And then jam them together. Then with the nuts jammed together, we should just be able to back the stud out of the, uh, the head. And then transfer it to the new head. And remove the jam nuts. All right, there's a second stud transferred to the new head. And there's one small one over here on the, uh, the old head on the end that needs to be moved in the same manner. Next step in preparing the head to go on the engine is to install the uh, camshaft housing plug. Let's remove the cap. Then I'm going to put a little bit of gray RTV seal packing on the joint here. So that's good, just a thin layer right there where the brain cap meets the top of the head. Now we take our new housing plug, which kind of has a rubberized coating, and it goes with the cup side in, followed by the bearing cap. And then these caps get torqued down to 12 foot-pounds. And the strap with this bolt and nut. 71 inch-pounds. It's not very much. Now we need to remove both cams before we can put the head on the engine because we need to be able to get to the, the cylinder head bolts. They're underneath the cams.
you can see when they assembled this, they used uh, some assembly lube. This is kind of kind of a gooey, thick, thick kind of oil. But uh, yeah, that's good. You want that? That'll help uh, upon first startup to make sure we don't have any undue wear before the oil really starts to circulate. Before installing the cylinder head, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to install the service bolt into the cam gear here. Again, we need to line up this hole in the sub gear with this threaded hole in the main gear and we'll chuck it into the vise, making sure that I use the flats on the cam and not damage any of the lobes. Then we're going to use my pulley holder with the proper size pins installed and install it into these two holes. With that held in place, I can pivot the sub gear against the main gear and apply tension to that torsion spring that's between them. Line up the holes and install the service bolt threaded into the main gear. Then I can release the tension. Now my gears are in the proper position to be installed back into the head. Now again with some acetone I'm going to clean the surface of the head so that we don't have any oily residue that might interfere with the, the sealing properties of the head gasket. Just want to make sure that guy is squeaky clean. And that's ready to go on the engine. To ensure that we get uh, proper torque on the cylinder head bolts we need to make sure that the bolt holes are all clean. I'm going to spray some brake cleaner in the holes. Then using compressed air and a rag, and I'm wearing my safety goggles. So there's all that grit and dirt we don't want down in those bolt holes. One last wipe down with the acetone. So here now is the new head gasket. My hands are very clean. I'm not going to get any oil on this. Now this one differs from the one on the passenger side primarily by this hole right here. So this is the top. I'm going to lay it over the alignment pins. I want to set the head down onto these two dowel pins and be really careful not to slide it around as much as possible so we don't scratch the bottom of the head. Here's a neat trick that I saw Matt do on his channel. But you can use drinking straws to help align the holes so you don't slide it around too much. You've got that straw stuck through the hole. I can visually line up the straw in the hole. There we go. And now if I can get the back one to line up. There. That new head looks really squeaky clean compared to the old one, huh? Since the cylinder head bolts are stretch bolts, I went ahead and bought new ones since it's highly recommended. I'm never really sure uh, what their condition is going to be, if they were overstressed or whatever. So I went ahead and bought them there, good, good insurance. And to make sure we get consistent torque, I want to add a little bit of oil to the threads. And under the head of the bolt. I'm just going to hand tighten them to start. Here's our head bolt tightening sequence for the left hand cylinder head. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And it's in three steps. The first step is to 25 foot pounds. Start with number one. And do a nice smooth motion until it clicks. If the next two passes, they want us to put a mark right on the front edge of each bolt. So I'm using this silver Sharpie. Let's put a dot right on the front edge of each bolt. So these next two passes, we're supposed to take it from where it is now to 90 degrees, and then another full pass for an additional 90 degrees. So Matt on his channel, he made a good suggestion 
and uh, that was to use one of these. This is a torque angle gauge or angle meter from Lyle. And what this does is gives you a nice little gauge. And on the end of the gauge, you connect your socket or your extension that way. And on the top, you, you put your wrench or your breaker bar. This is a half inch drive. And then there's a dial and you get it positioned and you turn the dial. I'm not sure if you can see these graduations on the video. But uh, there's zero degrees right there on the top, and you tighten the little thumb screw. And then you can turn your wrench until it reaches your desired angle. In our case, it'll be 90 degrees, which is right here on this little uh, graduated scale. And to keep the whole thing from rotating, you clip that onto something rigid so that the thing won't rotate. So I'll take the gauge in my socket, put it on the first bolt, and I'll clip this to something rigid over here, be the, the other cylinder head. Now I'll take my gauge and I'll zero it out and tighten the thumb screw. So that's zeroed out. Here's my target 90 degree mark over here that I'm going to be looking for. Bring in the breaker bar and we'll just tighten it 90 degrees. There's my 90 degree mark right there, so I know I'm accurate. Move over to the second one. Zero that out. That's 90. I'll do the same for the uh, remaining six bolts in the proper sequence. One more time through the sequence, an additional 90 degrees. Alright, we just want to go back and confirm that our little silver Sharpie marks, and that one is toward the back. Checking all of these, they all look good. Make sure we didn't miss one. That one back there looks good. And the last one in the far corner. We have this hex bolt that goes in right here. I'm going to put a little engine oil on the threads. Under the head. Tighten this down to 13 foot pounds. We're going to now install the intake cam and I'll uh, begin that process by oiling the, uh, the journals. And now with the single dot right there by my thumb at a 90 degree angle facing left here toward the driver's side, we're going to install the intake cam that way. With the dot in that position, we know that we're not trying to compress any of the springs uh, to open the valves, and it'll seat all the way down in. We'll be installing this new oil seal onto the end of the cam, and I'm going to apply just a light coating of grease on the edge here. Now install the oil seal. Now for the cap that goes on that oil seal, I'm going to install just a little bit of RTV just to seal those corners. And we install the cap right on top of that oil seal. Thread the bolts in by hand. A little more oil to where the bearing caps are going to go. Now these bearing caps are numbered, a little hard to see. This one says I2 for the intake side, and there's a little arrow pointing up. So this one goes back here, and the sequence goes one through six. Number one is the one all the way in the back that holds on to that housing plug. Here we have I3, with the arrow pointing back. 
I4, and I5. Put a little oil on the threads and under the heads of each of these bolts. I'm just going to lightly hand tighten them first. Now we want to tighten these in a sequence up to uh, 12 foot pounds. And first we're going to do this cap, then this cap, then this cap, then this cap, and lastly this cap. Now for the exhaust cam shaft, again, a liberal amount of oil to the journals. Now I'm going to install the exhaust cam shaft, and again here we have the single dot. I'm going to align that with the single dot on the uh, intake cam shaft gear. Took a couple tries, but you can see now down there if I show you in my mirror that the uh, the two dots do align the, uh, the upper dot on the tooth and the lower dot on the valley and those do mesh correctly remember we still have the service bolt in place it's holding the sub gear and the main gear in the proper tensioned position so now I should be able to rotate both cams gently so that this uh, cam falls all the way down into the journals it might help to actually rotate this cam since it's under a little bit of tension Now our cam is all the way down in place. A little more oil. And the bearing caps. Just so you can see these uh, exhaust cam bearing caps have an E on them. This is E3. And those are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, we'll tighten these down to 12 foot-pounds in this sequence, this cap one, this one second, third, and fourth. Now that the gears are tight together, we can remove the service bolt. There's no tension on it. Now before I put the valve cover back on this uh, this new side, I want to be very generous with the oil all throughout around the bearing caps and on the gears and on the lobes of the camshafts. So get it all good and wet. 